like many of you, have been shopping in CX for absolutely years. But I was today years old when I found out this little known fact about CX. You may already know this, but trust me, if you don't know, you need to know. Hello again folks and welcome back to another live game hunting episode when I head around my local charity shops, pawn shops, car boots and CX stores to try and add games into the collection as well as pick up games to flip either into CX for in-store credit or sell on eBay for a profit. And this week I'm going to share a tip with you which I have learned about CX that I never knew. I'm sure some of you may already know this but I never knew this and it is going to change the way I shop in CX. I don't want this to be like absolute clickbait, trust me, this is a really good tip and if you're not in the know, you need to be in the know. I'm really excited for this week's trip as we are heading out to loads of charity shops as well as hit up one of my favourite CX stores in the country in Kings Lynn. I have checked on their app and it looks like they have some incredibly amazing, awesome retro bits in stock and I can't wait to see if we can add them to the collection. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe. As I put new videos out every Saturday Live at 5, as well as bonus content throughout the week, I really want you folks along for the ride. Now, let's hit the road. Here we go then, first charity shop of the day, and it's good to see some games straight away, even if we are there with the kind of classic shovelware, such as brain training and just kind of some of these just not really enticing games for the PlayStation 2. But the main thing is, at least we're seeing games from the off, so hopefully today is going to be a good day of game hunting. Fingers crossed for more games along the way. Next door, and I just want to slow things down here because look at these game prices. PlayStation, Xbox, DS or 150, and what's this? Switch games 150. Now, if I could find a Switch game in a charity shop for £1.50, I would absolutely lose my mind. Unfortunately, it was just original Xbox, Xbox 360, and a lot of PC games here, which is really disappointing. But seriously, just imagine finding a Nintendo Switch game for £150. This was a case of right place, right time. Somebody had literally just bought this into the charity shop. They said to me what I'd like to pay for it. I wasn't really sure. They threw me back £2.50. And yeah, for £2.50, I will pick up this old school steering wheel that I can either use on a PlayStation 1 or the N64. Lego is one of those things that I just think charity shops always overcharge for. You can see here we have a brand new Lego set for £100. Now, I don't know the prices of Lego, but for me this seemed overpriced. So I looked it up and looking on eBay, most of the sold listings were more around the £50 to £60 mark. I know charity shops are trying to make money, but this is a little bit ridiculous, this kind of markup. But these are the kind of things I love to find in cherry shops. If you've seen recently, I found a couple of these lenticular Star Wars mouse mats. Another one here. Picking it up super cheap. This one may be loose, but I just love these. I just think they're such a zeitgeist of the 90s, of the old school PC gaming. Had to have it. Finding a box of games in a charity shop is always a good thing, but this is normally a bit of a warning sign for me. When they have a price label on it that says games as priced. This normally worries me as it means they normally know the value of some of them, but these are kind of a standard price across all of the games. There were some fairly decent titles in here, a lot of Call of Duties. The only problem is they were slightly like overpriced really. If these had been a pound, I'd have probably more likely picked them up. Some of these boxes were like, look at the state of that, it's absolutely chewed up. So these games didn't really have any major trading value for CX, or they weren't games I didn't I needed for the collection, so I did pass these up for someone else. This next charity shop was quite interesting. The entire upstairs section was full of DVDs, Blu-rays, CDs, and the world's smallest game section. Sadly, there was nothing to kind of write home about here. Just a couple of PC games and some old school cheat discs. There was a couple of audio books, which is quite interesting to see. An Alan Partridge one there, which is always nice in Norfolk. But yeah, this was quite a cool shop. It was really, really old building. And it was nice to see, like, there was some VHS tapes upstairs as well. The ceiling in here was super low. So I was kind of, like, crouched most of the time in here. I do keep getting tempted to go back to collecting VHS tapes. But I had a lot in my collection. A lot of them just went mouldy. So I did decide... I think it's just something I don't want to get into again. I did have a look at this Friends box set because this would trade in fairly well to CX. But it's one of those things it doesn't trade in for as much as you'd expect. And at the end of the day, when I've checked all those discs, it is a bit of a chore. Here is an absolute throwback to the 90s. This Tommy Nitro's Karate DVD. I don't know if anyone watched this back in the day. If you're like a kind of Power Rangers fan or just kind of a kid back in the 90s, this was good. 
I'm not the biggest Star Trek fan, but this would have been tempting to pick up and it had been a little bit cheap either to keep or sell on eBay. But for eight quid, I don't think I'd probably have made any money on this. It was an official uniform as such, but I just think it was a little bit overpriced. One or two pounds, definitely would have picked this up. But for eight pounds, I did leave it for fine. But very cool to see. On to the next chat shop and the window is being guarded by this giant The Rock figure, which was pretty cool. Inside they had a really strange selection of DVDs, including this National Lampoon's Gold Diggers, which I've never seen before. Like, I'm a massive fan of the National Lampoon's films, but I've never ever seen this one. And weirdly it has Will Ferrell in it, so let me know if you have seen this film i'm presuming it's pretty bad and speaking of films that are pretty bad i've been building my video game collection based film and dead or alive is one of the worst but for 25p i wanted to add it into the collection trust me if you've seen this film it is pretty bad literally the description on the front is half naked babes kung fu fighting my friend Mark had joined me on a game hunt today and we were jokingly saying all day how both of us were looking for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 and we randomly managed to find it. And I've never seen it in this cover art. It's really peculiar. It's like the new Turtles art for the old Turtles film. But unfortunately, the second film was missing for this box set. I was gutted. This may have been my biggest regret of the day, leaving behind these two guitars for Guitar Hero for the Xbox 360. They were 20 quid for the two and would have traded in quite nicely into CX. But the problem is they didn't have straps. One of them had the battery cover missing on the back. They were covered in stickers and I had no idea if these worked. But let me know in the comments down below. Would you have taken the risk and taken these into CX for trading credit? They do do really well on trading. But the thing is, if these didn't work, that is 20 quid down the pan. And I'm not really much of a gambling man. But let me know. Would you have taken the risk on these two Guitar Hero controllers? Next door, and they had a pretty good selection of Wii games in here. The only problem is these were all £1.50. These were more kind of games, if they'd been 50p or even a pound, I'd have probably picked them up to trade them in to CX for a little bit of in-store credit. But, you know, at the end of the day, £1.50 still isn't bad if you're trying to kind of add these games into your collection. But I just never know with these rock bands kind of song packs. These are the kind of things that I'll probably be looking out for more at the car boot to just pick up super cheap and trade in or add to the collection because I like to have the extra songs for these packs but mainly collect them for the Xbox 360. This may well be my best pickup of the day and yes this is for flipping because I already own this. The complete Firefly game for just three pounds. Firstly, Firefly is one of the greatest TV shows of all time and should never have been cancelled. Secondly, this is a fantastic board game. If you're a board game fan like myself, this is definitely one you want to pick up. And thirdly, picking this up for a couple of quid, I should be able to sell this on eBay for at least around £20. Obviously, I will need to check this is totally complete. But once I opened it up, it did look in really good condition. A lot of the components hadn't even been punched. So to pick this up for three quid is a bargain. Here we go then, last stop of the day, and as I said, I was super excited for this trip to CX, and so I checked the app, and they had some really, really good retro games in stock. Unfortunately, when I got there, it seemed that most of them were out of stock, but they still had some bits that I'd been looking for for a long while, such as hiding in the back here behind this copy of Conker's Bad Fur Day, which... I wish I could have picked up, but it is so incredibly expensive. Was a game I've been looking for for absolutely ages. Cannon fodder for the Mega Drive. This was on my list of 20 most wanted games in 2022. And I can't believe it's taken me this long to find it. But I'm just so happy to finally add this absolutely iconic 16-bit game to my collection. Here's something I'm saying less and less often, going through the Wii U section, I managed to find some games that I actually needed for the collection. Seriously, Wii U collecting, I think in 2023, is going to get very, very difficult. So if you see Wii U games you need, I recommend you pick them up, especially if they're games such as Batman 2 DC Super Heroes for £4, as these games are cheap now, but trust me, they're going to get more expensive in the future. I thought I needed Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for the Wii U. It turns out it's actually a different Call of Duty game. But it's good to see that these games are still cheap on the Wii U. But I do not think this will last forever. I think all Wii U games in the future are going to get super duper expensive. So now is definitely the time to pick these up. 
checking my app so I have game eye on my phone so I know which games I need for the collection. There's actually Call of Duty Ghosts, which I do not own for the Wii U. Again, for £5, this is a fairly cheap title to add to your Wii U collection, but trust me, I think if you're wanting to collect for the Wii U, I would start sooner rather than later, as I genuinely believe in a few years it's going to be very expensive. Since buying a PlayStation 5 late last year, I always go through the PlayStation 5 section when I'm at CX, and this one had a fairly decent sizable collection of games. There's definitely some cheaper titles now, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla is down to just £12. This game has been on my list for quite a long while, but you know what? I reckon I'm going to wait until it hits the £10 mark. I, I think that's one of the things with Ubisoft games. I'm always happy to wait. But let me know in the comments down below. You can see here there's a standard edition of Valhalla and also the limited edition. Which one would you pick up for the collection, even though the DLC is obviously used? As we're seeing more people move on to the PlayStation 5, now is the time to pick up the PlayStation 4 exclusives while they were lower in price, such as The Last Guardian, which is down to just £8. I've never played this one, but I was a massive fan of Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, so I definitely want to pick this up at some point. And I think now is a good time to pick up these PlayStation 4 exclusives while they're cheap. The games will probably get more expensive in the following years, so grab them now. This CX always has a really good selection of PlayStation 1 games. I've been trying to find a copy of Tekken 3, complete with Black Label for absolutely ages. Opening this one up, it did seem like it didn't have instructions, but let me know if you know. Do CX, if they have PlayStation 1 games on the shelf, do they keep the instruction manuals behind the shelf with the discs? Because none of these had instruction manuals, so I'm just wondering, do they just not leave the instruction manuals on the shelf? So there we have it, the end of another game hunt. Or is it? Because when I went to check out with my games I picked up in CX, something happened that has never happened before. And I think it's going to change the way I shop at CX. You may notice, you may not notice, but you need to notice. Here we are then, back in the game, so I'm going to explain what happened in that trip to CX. So, when I checked online, they had a load of Sega Saturn games, as well as SNES games in stock. Unfortunately, when I got to the store, none of them appeared to be on the shelves. I did, of course, manage to pick up this copy of Cannon Fodder for the Mega Drive. This is a game I've been looking for for absolute ages. I knew this was in stock in store, and I was super excited to go and pick it up. It was £15, this thing is complete and in absolutely amazing condition. So, when I got to the counter, I'd taken a couple of Wii U games and a couple of PlayStation 4 games, but I just asked them about the games that I'd seen were in stock online. Now, I had presumed over the years, seemingly falsely, that if a game is, says it's in stock in the app, that doesn't necessarily mean it's in the store, but... When I spoke to somebody behind the counter, the games I was looking for, that shoe or online, were actually in stock. They just were not on display. I had just presumed, evidently wrongly all these years, that CX put all the games they have on display. So my tip is, if you check online and it says a game is in stock, just ask. They might just not have it on display. And trust me, I managed to pick up some amazing bits that... Had I not checked the stock checker and asked behind the counter, would have never got. I'm really sorry if you already knew this about CX, but I did not know it. And it's absolutely blown my mind. The number of times I have checked the app and seen there was a game that I wanted in store, only to go along and not find it, is so numerous. So now, every time, if I see a game is in stock, I'm going to ask. Because the first game I wanted to pick up is Virtua Fighter 2. For the Sega Saturn. This is in really, really good condition. Like, it is a nice boxed Sega Saturn game, which is getting harder to get. It is complete with the manual and everything. And this was just £6, which is an absolute bargain. I also managed to pick up this copy of Die Hard Trilogy for the Sega Saturn, which we all know is an absolute classic game. And once again, this one is complete with the manual in the box. Sega Saturn games are getting harder and harder to find. And the fact these weren't on the shelf just blew my mind to be able to pick up these two games, which most people wouldn't have even realized were in stock. But the next two games are the ones that really blew my mind. Recently, I've been really trying to boost my box SNES collection. And I saw they had some box SNES games in stock, but sadly they weren't on the shelf. But 
When I asked behind the counter, they had this copy of F0 for the SNES. This thing is in really, really nice condition. It is boxed and complete. And the thing is, this wasn't on display. When I asked about it, they pulled out a massive box of complete boxed retro. And the best game in the box is still to come. This is the final game that I got by asking behind the counter. It is Donkey Kong Country for the SNES. And once again, this is in absolutely incredible condition. It is boxed and complete. And the thing is, if I hadn't have asked behind the counter, I'd have never seen these games. I can kind of understand they can't display every single game, but you would think box complete SNES games, these are the kind of games you would think are on the shelf. And again, I apologize if you knew that CX does not display every single game, but if even one person watches this video and now realizes they need to ask about games, then my work here is done. Of course, it's not just expensive retro games we're looking for on the game hunt. We're picking up cool items for the collection, such as this Lenticular. You know I love me some Lenticular. Star Wars mouse mat. This was just 50p. And I am just a massive Star Wars fan, a massive retro PC fan. So for 50p, this is a must. When it comes to adding DVDs to the collection, I'm always looking for the weird and wonderful. And these two definitely fit that description. We have Dead or Alive and National Lampoon's Gold Diggers, which features Will Ferrell. I am a massive fan of all of the National Lampoon's films, but I have never seen this one before. So let me know in the comments down below if you've seen this one. I'm really looking forward to checking it out. And I'm slowly building a fairly sizable collection of video game based movies. Yes, most of these are terrible and yes, Dead or Alive definitely falls into that category. This is one of those items, it's difficult to decide whether to pick it up or not just because it takes up a lot of space. But for £2.50 for an arcade steering wheel I can use for this PlayStation, the Saturn and the N64, it's kind of hard to pass it up. Like Even if I put this in the back of a cupboard, it's just good to be able to have a steering wheel to play on these retro consoles. And for £2.50, to be able to play Mario Kart on the N64 with a steering wheel is priceless. Here we have then our final pickup of the week and possibly the bargain of the week. This Firefly board game was just £2. I already have this in the collection. I will be putting this on eBay and it should sell from anything from £20 to £35. This is the thing, folks. If you are out game hunting, look for other things you can flip either into CX or onto eBay. The thing is, if you're out looking for stuff and you find something extra, it's just more money than you can put back into your game collection. And trust me, the bargains are definitely out there. There we have it then, folks. That's the end of another live game hunt. And if I help just one person this week, it'll be worth it for me. I'm sorry if you already knew this about CX, but if you didn't, knowledge is power. And for me, that's what YouTube is all about. Increasing our knowledge and learning more about game collecting. Because the more we know, the better we do at it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe. And as always, keep playing the game. See y'all soon.